Hi everyone, Leon here. Welcome back to my channel, the channel that inspires learning. In a previous video, I shared with you on how to rally enough of those people who believe in what you believe in to create that tipping point in order to gain mass market acceptance for your products or services. In this video, I'm going to share with you how severely it can affect a company when a company Y goes fuzzy. I shared the example of Walmart in my previous video. What happened to Walmart was that they went through a shift in direction when their founder Sam Walton died. A company once well known for how well it's treated its employees and customers is now heading in the opposite direction. By the end of year 2008, they had 73 class action lawsuits against them, paid hundreds of millions of dollars in settlement of cases and rallies from communities to keep them out of cities and towns. The reason is because the company's why has become fuzzy. From being obsessed with serving the community to being obsessed with financial goals. This is the scenario where the author terms as the split. He illustrates the split with a diagram. As you can see, the wine starts to be diluted with time and what the company is doing became the focus. One simple reason for this is it's easier to measure growth of a company from what it does, isn't it? Because what is tangible and it's easily seen and counted. He explains that the goal for companies is to ensure that the clarity of why is closely aligned to the what because it is critical for the company to inspire and lead. For companies that go through a split, they are no longer inspired by a cause greater than themselves. This usually happens when a company grows in size and is successful. At this point, you may be confused and ask, what do I mean by this? Isn't success good? Isn't this what all the company is looking for? No, I don't mean success is not good. I mean, it's good when the why stays clear with the growth of the company. Because as the company grows in size, the CEO's or founder's message tends to get diluted with that. Why? Because there's just too many layers of people within the company itself. And it's critical for those who believe in what you believe in to relate to your why, to your cause, so that they can still be your raving fans. Remember the diagram I showed that illustrates the relationship between the company and the marketplace? The only contact point between the two of them is at the what level. So if the why is not clearly brought to life at the what level, the ability by the company to inspire is severely affected. To illustrate this, the author brought up a few companies where their why went fuzzy and cost them their reputation, trust, profits, and so on. Walmart, Apple, Microsoft, Dell, Starbucks, they all went through the split. One of the main reasons is when their founder or CEO leaves or dies and that made the split happen because it didn't have a clear direction or course for their successor to lead. The thing is this, all founders and CEOs of a company will eventually leave or die, right? The question is when and how prepared is the organization when this happens? The challenge is not to cling on to the leader. It is to find ways to keep that founding vision alive forever. Now, there's this story in the book about Ben who has cerebral palsy and still chose to run and compete in races. I would like to read off the last few paras of this story because each and every word is so important and I feel that there's a brilliant lesson behind this that we can all learn from it. So, when Ben eventually crosses the finish line, he is in pain and he's exhausted. It took every ounce of strength he had to make it. His body is bruised and blooded. He is covered in mud. Ben inspires us indeed. But this is not a story of when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. 
This is not a story of when you fall down, pick yourself up. Those are great lessons to learn, without a doubt, but we don't need Ben Coleman to teach us those lessons. There are dozens of others we can look up to for that, like an Olympic athlete, for example, who suffered an injury just months before the Games only to come back to win a medal. Ben's lesson is deeper. Something amazing happens after about 25 minutes when everybody else is done with their race. Everyone comes back to run with Ben. Ben is the only runner who, when he falls, someone else will help pick him up. Ben is the only runner who, when he finishes, has a hundred people running behind him. What Ben teaches us is special. When you compete against everyone else, no one wants to help you. But when you compete against yourself, everyone wants to help you. Now think about how we are doing our business, how we live our lives. We are always competing against our competitors. We are always saying, what is our competitor doing? What is it that we can add on more features or qualities um, or things that we can have an edge over them? What if we change the perspective to competing against ourselves, to becoming a better version of ourselves every single day? What kind of questions would we be asking? How can we better serve our community? How can we better serve our customers and our clients? How can we be more useful, be more productive in our lives? For the companies, for ourselves, for the people around us. All this set of questions will change when we shift our perspective to competing against ourselves instead of competing against whoever our competitors are. The journey of becoming a better version of yourself will never be a journey of regret. My why is to inspire learning because I believe that the sharing of knowledge and learning is a virtue. And I believe that if each and every one shares our learning and knowledge with one another, the world will be impacted in a positive way. And it will be an even more beautiful place for all of us to live in. And especially in times of uncertainty right now, where the COVID virus has brought upon the world, I hope that each and every one will spread positivity, knowledge, learning, instead of fear and uncertainty. In the next video, I'll be sharing a book called Contagious by Jonah Berger. Nope, it's not a medical book. It's not related to COVID-19, but it's a book that shows us the steps and tools that we can use to make our products and services catch on. If you're interested, hit the subscribe button and be updated on my next release. I hope this video has brought value to you. If you like this video, do subscribe to my YouTube channel for weekly updates on the learnings from books I've read in relationship, business, and personal development. Or share it with a friend you care about. Because when you share, you're not just sharing a video, you're sharing content that could make a difference in people's lives. I thank you for watching, wish you well, and see you in the next video.